There is a new tool in intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, and it's being tested at sea right now. This has the potential to drastically change anti-submarine warfare. The device is Voyager, and it's being developed by Navy Postgraduate School and Sea Trek. It's called the Persistent Smart Acoustic Profiler to the Navy postgraduate students, and it generates its own power, allowing it to operate at sea for long periods of time. It's mobile, so it can swim to vast parts of the oceans around the world. It can also record audio down to a depth in excess of 900 meters. It can then transmit these audio files that are fully processed into either a WAV file or a full spectrum FFT and transmit it to satellites every six to eight hours, three cycles a day essentially. The Voyager is a combination of two devices, Oceansonic's IC Listen AF Smart Digital Hydrophone is the brains of the Voyager. The Ctrex Infinity Float System gives the device power, stability in the water column, and the ability to communicate with satellites. So Oceansonic's IC Listen AF Hydrophone can process, stream, which is really important, and record calibrated audio in full spectrum or wave data files. The calibrated audio is what makes this useful to people like me, to Sonerman, to the Office of Naval Intelligence, because the calibrated audio offers a reference level for the recording so we have something to compare it to. It's not just raw audio coming from a microphone somewhere. This one means that we can actually use it to conduct data analysis. All this processing, by the way, is done in the hydrophone body itself before it's ever transmitted, and that is a major leap in capability. It also has a rechargeable battery on board itself that lasts eight hours with lots of memory for storage of these audio files, all encapsulated in this device. Uh, as part of Voyager, it records 10 minute audio clips multiple times during its dive sequence. Uh, it also has a built-in event detector, which means if it's in between 10 minute audio recordings and it hears something that it finds interesting, it can begin another recording on its own to record that event and include it with its report. Now, the performance of this little smart uh, digital hydrophone is quite impressive. I mean, the frequency range is one hertz to 12 kilohertz. Uh, the one hertz, I think they might be rounding down a little bit. Uh, if they are actually getting to one hertz, I would love to see how they did that. I hope someone from Ocean Sonics maybe sees this and reaches out to me, because uh, that is quite the claim right there. Uh, I, I think it's probably more likely to be like five hertz or eight hertz. It's still very, very good. Um, the SPL, sound pressure level sensitivity, goes down to 17 decibels micropascal. That is a huge claim because that means it's a very extremely sensitive hydrophone uh, that we're using in a water column where the average ambient noise, if there's nothing happening other than water sloshing around at depth, which is very quiet, uh, that measures between 20 and 30 decibels on average. We're talking 17 decibels. The gap between that 30 and 17 is the acoustic advantage this thing has. To bring uh, it into an example, let's say you have a very quiet submarine. It's diesel electric, it's running on its battery, it's barely moving at three knots, so it's not making any noise. It is quieter than the water it's sitting in. This hydrophone can still hear that submarine because it can listen to levels that are lower than ambient noise, than background noise. It's quite the claim. This is an incredible hydrophone right here. And if you weren't chucking it into the ocean, you can power it with a USB drive from your laptop. That's how little power this thing takes. It's extremely good piece of kit. And here is another configuration of the Sea Trek uh, Infinity Float. This one has a directional hydrophone mounted on the bottom of it. That's what the black thing is there on the bottom. So not only could you get a great recording from the AF hydrophone mounted, you could also get a bearing, a direction. So whenever it makes its report of here's the audio file of something interesting happened, oh, by the way, it happened to the north of my position. So now the Navy will have a direction in which this event happened instead of it just being in the vicinity. Uh, very useful 
uh, information. So let's talk about how it works. I'm gonna uh, kind of go over its whole cycle here. Um, this is the uh, C-Trek Infinity float system. Uh, the body contains a synthetic material, and this is the magic sauce. This is the proprietary material that is a uh, secret to the company, and this is how they uh, make this device work. What it does, the synthetic material physically changes. It deforms a little bit as temperature in the water column changes. What this results in is a change in buoyancy in the float, which means it can sink or rise depending on the water temperature and how this diaphragm, the synthetic material, is uh, adjusting to it. So this cycling of going up in the water column and down in the water column spins a very small turbine that uh, generates electricity for the components on board. In this case, that smart digital hydrophone that has memory storage and also the ability um, to, to transmit to, to satellites. Uh, that ability, by the way, is part of the float system itself, not the hydrophone, that's two, two different things. But that's how this thing can stay at sea for long periods of time, is that it cycles in the water column to charge batteries over and over again, doing up to three of these dives a day. This is a clip, or a screen grab, if you will, from Sea Trek's own YouTube page where they explain this process. And um, they have, there's basically three parts of the voyage. It has the data transmit part, transmitting these full spectrum FFT files to a satellite or a wave file uh, to a satellite. It then goes down and does its recordings. And with the um, persistent smart acoustic profiler, it does two or two 10 minute recordings or more uh, while it's down deep. And then, uh, after it's done its recording, instead of going right back to the surface to transmit again, it has to regenerate power. So it will spend two hours or more oscillating in the water column, going from a couple hundred feet down to you know a few hundred feet deeper than that and back up again, spinning that little turbine, generating power. And while it's doing that, the smart digital hydrophone is taking that time, using that time wisely. It's not just sitting there. It's processing raw recorded audio into usable WAV files and full spectrum FFT files. Those files that are uh, taken or created from calibrated audio are instantly usable at ONI. We don't need special computers at ONI, Office of Naval Intelligence to, to process those and then analyze it. You can open the file and it's right there on your screen because uh, the smart digital hydrophone has already done that work for you. That's the whole process. And it's mobile. Whenever the Navy drops it in the water, it can swim hundreds of miles as you see here. And we're testing this right now in multiple parts of the world. So how does this impact ASW warfare? I promised you in the beginning, this would be a significant impact. Well, these devices are autonomous, self-powering, long lasting and low maintenance because they have almost no moving parts other than a little turbine and the, the synthetic material that changes buoyancy, right? Everything else is digital. There's very little that can break or require maintenance. You chuck it in the water, you start getting reports three times a day. It's great. When we use this in mass, dropping dozens of these in a large area of say, I don't know, the South China Sea, the Philippine Sea, areas of interest, the Persian Gulf, we're gonna be able to get uh, situational awareness for that entire area without detection. These things don't make any noise. Uh, the only thing that they broadcast is that transmission every six to eight hours. So when it's actually operating in the water column, it is near silent. So great work to the Navy Postgraduate School, school and their students, uh, Sea Trek and Ocean Sonics. Your two technologies being married together is providing the US Navy a uh, really groundbreaking tool here that I think will shape uh, ASW warfare going forward. And if you wanna see more photos of this with technical readouts of the performance of the hydrophone, I've got those on the Patreon. Just click this link right here, it'll take you right to it. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching everybody, bye.